Hello. Hello, my name is Tierra Johnson, and I'm a third year professional pharmacy student at Florida a and University, and I'm doing a journal critique on the article, Clindamycin versus Trimethoprim Cephalothoxazole for Uncomplicated Skin Infections. Um, three of the top authors are Norm Miller, Robert Dion, and Buddy Creech. It was funded by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and National Center for Advancing Translation Sciences. Some background information is skin and soft tissue infections are usually caused by Staph aureus, which is a gram-positive organism. The CDC indicates that one in every three people carry staph in their noses. Many patients, especially in the United States hospitals and worldwide, have been infected by MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant staph aureus. MRSA, in the 1960s, was identified as a disease that patients acquired from bacteria in hospitals. Community-acquired MRSA, specifically, has been a prevalent problem in pediatric patients. Community-acquired MRSA was first described in the 1980s. It has been affected by prisoners, drug users, athletes, and those in the military. MRSA can become very severe and lead to sepsis and necrotizing pneumonia. Because MRSA cannot be treated with Bactam lactam, with beta lactam antibiotics alone, clindamycin and Bactrim, which is trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, are recommended as treatment for skin and soft tissue infections in pediatric patients. Now, the objective of this study was to address the limitations of studies of the, of the safety and efficacy of clindamycin and Bactrim in the treatment of skin infections. The study also set out to compare clindamycin and Bactrim for the treatment of uncomplicated skin infections at four U.S. centers located in areas where MRSA is prevalent. The trial design was a multi-center, prospective, randomized, double-blind clinical trial, so neither the subjects or the doctors knew who was getting what treatment. It was also located at different um, areas across the globe for different centers which included the University Medical Center in Chicago, San Francisco General Hospital in San Francisco, Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance, California, and Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville. The, I, the IRB approval was National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and the National Center for Research Resources. Inclusive criteria that had to be met included patients have to exhibit two or more of the following symptoms for 24 hours or more in order. So erythema, swelling of in duration, local warmth, prevalent drainage, and tenderness to pain or population. Exclusive criteria include superficial skin infections, at a body site that requires specialized management, a human or animal bite at the infectious site, high fever, recipient of immunosuppressant medications, or, or presence of an immunocompromising condition such as diabetes, or chronic renal failure, morbid obesity, and a BMI greater than 40, or a surgical site or prosthetic device infection and, rec and receipt of antibacterial therapy with anti-staphylococcal activity in the previous 14 days. There was a total of 524 patients who were enrolled and of those 524 patients, 264 patients were assigned to receive clindamycin treatment and 260 patients were Assigned to retrieve, were assigned to receive the Bactrim treatment. 
the primary endpoint of this trial was clinical care, which is the absence of clinical failure. The secondary endpoints were clinical care at the end of treatment visit and, and clinical care at the one month follow up visit. Care rates at the one month follow up visit were similar for clindamycin and Bactrim in the attempt to treat population. The duration of the study took place for about 40 days, so approximately six weeks at four different sites, which were, mis which were mentioned previously. The population included patients with a larger abscess or cellulitis, or a group that included patients with a smaller abscess. The arms of the study included 264 subjects who received clindamycin treatment, as mentioned previously, as well as 260 subjects who received the Bactrim treatment. So for the statistical analysis, the study was designed with the power of at 80% and an alpha level of 0 0.05 with a sample size of 524 patients to compare clindamycin and Bactrim. It was designed to detect an absolute difference between the two treatment groups of 85% versus 95% cure rates in a population that could be evaluated. Comparisons were performed with the use of Pearson chi-square test, Fisher's exact test, or an analysis of variance test. An independent data and safety monitoring committee performed interim analysis for safety. For the baseline characteristics, the most baseline, the most common baseline found in culture was S aureus. So 217 out of 524 patients, so about 41.4%. And 27 out of the 217 isolates, which came out to be about 12.4%, were clindamycin resistant, and one of 217 isolates was Bactrim resistant. Some of the adverse events were diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and pruritus, and rash. For the author's conclusion, they concluded that the study did not indicate that one treatment was superior to the other. This conclusion was due to no significant differences between the cure rates of clindamycin and Bactrim. During the study, patients did not have any diarrhea caused by C. difficile. The author states that this may be attributed to the low incidence of C. difficile in patients with low disease severity and younger age, which were characteristics of pa patients in this study. Um, overall, I think that this was a very good study. Some strengths of the study include that it was conducted in a well-populated city, adequately powered, double-blinded, and had a good study design. And I believe that the, the double-blinded is a good trait because neither the doctor or the patients knew who received what treatment, so that minimized on the chance of anything being biased. Um, another strength of this study that I believe was that it assessed two drugs that are commonly seen in outpatient setting and cost effective. Some weaknesses that I believe, um, I think that it should have been compared to other drugs to treat MRSA, clindamycin, that is, which include linezolid or doxycycline. And this would just be useful in those patients who are allergic to Bactrim. So they may have a, a um, sulfur allergy. So for those patients, I believe that another trial should be implemented. But besides that, I believe that um, it was a very good, um, a very good trial. And in conclusion, there was found to be no significant difference between clindamycin and Bactrim 
with respect to either efficacy or side effect profile. So um, I believe that was a good trial. And that concludes my journal presentation. Thanks.